Connected Voice Journey Podcast. Your voice is your medicine. Welcome to the Reconnected Voice Journey podcast with me, your host, Francesca J. Littman. This podcast is dedicated to exploring the voice in its many different forms, from how we express ourselves in the world through our speaking voice and singing voice, to the stories and words we tell ourselves and others, to the voice of our intuition, the voice of nature, the voice of divine guidance, and so much more. The intention of this podcast is to offer you inspiration and hope as you embark on your own unique journey to reclaim all aspects of your voice and to build trust in the immense power that already lies within you. As we travel on this journey together, I'll be talking with inspirational guest speakers, as well as sharing my personal stories and experiences on the path of my own journey of reconnection with my voice, plus some useful tips I've picked up along the way. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking through some tips to support you in deepening your connection with your voice. So, to start off with the breath, it all starts here. So, the voice is powered by the breath, and without that connection with your breath, there's not going to be any sound, not to mention no life. (laughs) So, ahead of using your voice, It's really important, or certainly really valuable, if you want to feel really, really connected, to take that time to connect in with your breath and to really breathe as deeply into your belly as possible. So breathing in, I like to think of myself as having roots um, in the bottoms of my feet and going up through my legs and also through the base of my spine. Um, I spend a lot of time sitting cross-legged. I prefer to sit cross-legged than... Um, just in a standard way with my feet on the floor. Um, And of course, standing, you're going to be focusing on your feet. Um, But the most important thing is just to really be aware of your belly. So thinking about breathing in through your root into your belly and creating that, that sense of power, that sense of airflow, so that when you start to use your voice, you've got all that power coming through your belly and allowing that that breath to move upwards through your body so that when it reaches your vocal cords, there's really that that beautiful support behind. So you're actually, you're engaging the breath and of course you're also engaging all the muscles there. So this is going to be really the basis for all of your conscious connection with your voice. And this is something that you can use both for connecting with your voice for for speaking, so using this when you want to speak, but also it's something that you can use for creating vocal sound. So it's the same principle that you would be breathing deeply and then of course instead of just speaking, you're actually going to allow the the vocal sound to come out, so just singing sound in in whichever form it wants to present itself. My next tip for you is about making friends with your voice. And there are so many people that I know of who have said to me that they don't like the sound of their voice or they don't feel comfortable with their voice or so many aspects. So my advice to you is to just really take some time. Um, I really strongly advise just take some time to sit in stillness and have a conversation with your voice. Now close your eyes, take some deep breaths and then just say hello and really open yourself to having a conversation with your voice as though you were talking with a friend um, or maybe even a small scared child because sometimes that might be how your voice feels depending on your life experiences, how you feel about your voice. It may well be that, you know, your, your voice feels like this small scared child. So let your voice know that you're here to listen from a space of compassion, a space of non-judgment, and just be present with your voice. Let go of all expectations and just follow, follow your voice, wherever you feel your voice in your body, wherever you feel drawn to. Um, Because very often we might, might think about connecting with our voice, but it might not actually be anywhere in the place that we think it might be, like the throat. Um, You might find that it's in your heart or you might find that it's in your belly, it might be in your big toe. So just opening that space to sit with your voice and see where are you and 
just just having presence for whatever arises in the moment. Tip number three, create a voice affirmation. So if you're one of those people who uses negative statements about your voice, like I don't like my voice or I can't sing or you know anything at all like that, tune in and see what, what is the affirmation that you need actually. Um, now with affirmations, you know, they they can be really powerful. Also, the the feeling that we have underneath is really really important. Um, so when you work with an affirmation and you feel really like you don't believe in it, then maybe you need to look at how you can change that affirmation or change the wording around that affirmation. But just becoming aware and starting to change the words that you use, picking yourself up. If you say I can't sing or I don't like my voice or any of these these things that we tell ourselves or say to others, just tuning in and what, what's needed. So, you know, for example, if, you, if you, you're using I can't sing, try to replace that for yourself with I love exploring and feeling the vibrations of my voice because then you're stepping away from that sense of singing into a sense of just exploring the vibrations. And just feeling into what's going on instead of having this prejudgment about what it should sound like. Um, another affirmation that I really love to work with is I inspire love through my communication. Um, this really helps me to, to become aware of how I'm using my voice and to, to pick myself up if I'm not really using it in a loving way. Um, to just remind me that is my intent to inspire love through my communication and also it can help you you know if you feel there's something you've got to share but you also have some self-doubt just tuning into that and knowing that love is your your intent behind it so really stepping into to ownership of that intent to inspire love tip number four familiarize yourself with the sound of your voice so it's really interesting that so many people feel so self-conscious about how their voices sound and I used to feel like that as well. I really didn't like the sound of my voice, I didn't like the sound of my singing, etc, etc. I thought it should be something different and of course when we hear ourselves speaking and we play back it's a different sound. Of course it's a different sound because it's resonating within us or it's resonating outside of us depending whether we're hearing internally or we're playing something back. The key thing to remember here is that whilst you might be listening to your voice and thinking, ooh, I don't like the sound of that, remember that all the people around you, they only hear that voice. They don't hear the voice inside of you. So, you know, one of the things I found really, really helpful for myself to get more familiar and comfortable with the sounds, the resonance of my own voice is to listen back to myself. So, for example, once I've finished um, recording this podcast, I'm going to be listening back. I'm going to be listening for the content, but I'm also going to be listening just to hear my voice. How do I feel? How is the energy in my voice? And, you know, it's really interesting because there's so many different aspects to, to the voice. So, you know, you can be listening to yourself simply to observe the sound patterns. How does your voice move? Does it seem quite monotone or is it moving around? If you feel excited about something, how does that compare with when you're feeling a little bit down, there's something on your mind, something on your heart? Um, and again, yeah, listening to, to the content. Um, yeah, so another thing that I use, it's been a really powerful tool for me the last years, is the WhatsApp voice messages. Um, and I've spent time, like, particularly earlier on when I started using them, I'd be really doubting like the wisdom in what I was saying. It seemed like the right thing to come through in the moment, but then I'd be doubting myself. And then listening back, I've been so blown away, actually, at times by the things that come out of me. And I listen to them as an observer. And I'm just like, oh, wow, that's that's amazing. Actually, I did know what I was talking about, even though I doubted myself. Actually, actually, I do know what I'm talking about. 
So start listening back to your voice in whichever way that you can, whichever way feels comfortable for you. You might want to record something just for yourself or maybe record a message for a friend, then listen back. And as you're doing so, try to listen as though you were lovingly listening to a friend who's sharing about something. And, you know, if you find yourself judging, just ask yourself, would you be judging your friend? Um, Would you be judging about the sound of their voice or what they're saying? Or would you just be listening with your heart and extending love out to whatever it is they're sharing? So familiarise yourself with the sound of your voice. Tip number five. Notice where you're speaking from or where you're singing from. So tune in. As often as possible, your body is going to give you brilliant feedback. Check where the sound's coming from because so, so often we speak from our throats. We've disconnected from lower down in our bodies and particularly when we want to be heard and we're not being heard, when we feel nervous, excited, things can move up high. They can become very much from the throat instead of having that full bodied experience. So again, it's going back to the breath as in the first tip that I shared with you about breathing deep into your belly. So if you notice that when you're in conversation with someone, just take a moment, take a pause, take that deep breath inwards and then bring in the intent. You might even like to visualize just whatever works for you of bringing your voice up from your belly feeling this full connection and really connecting in also with your root chakra so that it's a full bodied experience and just see how things start to shift depending on how you're using your voice and you may well find for example that if somebody hasn't been listening to you but then you tune into this energy and really bring in this intention that suddenly they might actually start listening to you in a different way because you're being fully present in what you're saying and you're speaking from this place of really beautiful, connected, grounded authority, and not authority over the other person, but authority within yourself and in what you have to share. Tip number six, consider your voice as being like a muscle. So if you're about to do some heavy kind of exercise or you're going out for a run or something like that, you would do something, highly likely, I imagine, to warm up your muscles, to warm up your body before you get going. So in the morning, before you start using your voice full throttle, it's a really good idea, particularly if you, you know, whereas I I live in an environment, a situation where I don't need to use my voice very much first thing in the morning and I've got plenty of time with it and I do my practices with my voice, but I'm not using it from the moment I wake up. I know in other situations or when my son was younger, um, it would be pretty much from from the word go that I'd be using my voice a lot. So, you know, particularly if you're someone who's needing to use their voice a lot, you're busy with your kids or with your work and everything sort of go, go, go from the moment you wake up. Do try before you get out of bed just to give your voice a little bit of love, a little bit of a, a warm up before you start using it. So some really, really gentle humming with minimal pressure on your vocal cords um, and really, again, tuning into your belly. That's a really, really beautiful way to just start gently warming up the vocal cords. Um, You can start with like a long single note, just like a single pitch note, and then maybe start to explore different pitches, just whatever you've got time for, whatever feels good. Um, And if you're able to really take time with this, pay attention to the sensations, notice where you feel the sound, where you feel the pressure. If you feel any kind of uncomfortable pressure in your throat, just give your voice a message to relax and to release tension and just observe what happens, see if you notice any kind of differences. Um, And as your voice starts to feel more flexible, you can start to play around with um, a gentle hummed glissando. So that's like a a sweeping up and down through your vocal range as far as you feel comfortable to stretch it. So that can be a mm. So it's almost like, like being a child, like playing with sirens. So that's one exercise you can use. It's a gentle hum. 
Another one is a z. So those, this is a z sound. I'd suggest doing your humming first if you've just woken up, but then you can step into the z, really using that from your belly and just playing around with that um, as gently as possible. And then you can strengthen it as you go, but just really checking in with your body and really listening to your body's feedback because that will show you what's what's good and what's what's not in the moment for your voice. Tip number seven, play with your voice. So when you first discovered your voice as a baby, as a young child, you were delighting in all the different sounds you could make. There was no kind of judgment until somebody else came along on it and put a judgment on it and you took that on as your own. There was no judgment. You just played. You enjoyed that experience all the different sensations that you could get through using your voice all of that movement and the the vibrations and the funny feelings in your mouth all around your body you know as a, a little baby young child your focus was purely on the experience of sound and sensation and if it felt good you did more of it until somebody told you not to if it feels good, we do more. It's, it's a natural human instinct. Like if something feels good, we want more and more and more of it. So I really recommend to set aside some time for yourself in a private space and give yourself permission to play, to explore, rediscover that same joy and wonder that you had as your child self. And just explore those different sounds whatever sounds spontaneously want to come through you maybe they're animal sounds maybe there's more zing like i just use now maybe there's a hum maybe there's big open r sounds or so many 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 different sounds that you can make through your voice so step into that space of play and joyful exploration tip number eight change your intent so when we speak or when we sing, unless we're consciously working with the energy in a different way, most of us end up leaking a lot of our vital life force energy through our voices. Um, it's mostly because, you know, a lot of the time we have been conditioned one way or another to really force our voices forward in order to get people's attention. We've got the sense of like pushing outwards. Um, particularly if we live or work or have lived or worked in environments where there's lots of people continuously rising, raising their voices or talking over one another, we, you know, that we end up doing the same thing. We follow, we follow that, and then of course we end up depleting ourselves of energy, and you know, you may well find that you feel completely drained. That's certainly something that I've experienced in the past around my my family, the family I grew up with. And, um, you know, even now I notice sometimes when we're all together, I notice that I have this tendency to start pushing my voice. And I really have to just pay attention, like, oh, hang on, wait, I'm forcing this voice, I'm not getting heard. So really become aware of that and start to consciously envision yourself actually keeping your energy within your own energy field. So when you're talking, you're visualizing drawing people to you, drawing people to your voice. And your voice, it's almost like your voice is coming inwards rather than outwards, not with the sound, but the energy, so that it's drawing others to you. You can you, you can see there's some people that maybe even with loud people, they speak softly and somehow have this magical ability to to be heard, to really draw people's attention to them like a magnet. So just play with that, explore that that um, that idea, that the sensation, the experience of drawing people to you with your voice, rather than pushing out. Really, really conscious of the energy, of what the energy is doing. Tip number nine: Give your voice some TLC. So most of us ask a huge amount of our voices. We expect them to perform constantly. We, we don't really stop to consider how much we're asking of our voice. We expect them to keep going from the moment we wake up to the moment we get to sleep in our work environments, in our family environments, with our friends, etc., etc. 
So be aware to actually give yourself breaks from talking every now and then. Obviously, we each have different amounts that we need to use our voice, but particularly if you're using your voice a lot, you want to be particularly conscious of really giving your voice a break every now and then. So be sure to nourish your voice with plenty of hydration, um, drinking plenty of water. Don't drink water too cold, though, because this will... Um, um, it, yeah, it's not good for the, the vocal cords. Um, I've lost my word, can't think of what the word is. Um, contract, I think it is. So if you just think of anything that, that when it gets cold, what happens to it, the same is going to happen with your vocal cords. So be conscious to really, you know, drink water that's going to be a good, um, a good temperature. And also, of course, not too hot either. Um, drink herbal teas, so things like rosemary. Um, rosemary is really good also for if, you, if you're feeling a bit phlegmy, that will help to loosen the phlegm up a little bit. Um, chamomile is also very gentle. Um, another thing that, um, that can be very nice, good for your voice, is warm water. Notice warm, not hot. Warm water with honey, that can be very soothing. And of course, be conscious about having nutrient-rich fruits and vegetables with high water content. Um, and yeah, also just be aware that, you know, fruits that have a high acidity or herbs like ginger, for example, um, those are going to have, um, sorry, spices, um, they're going to have um, a, a different effect, you know, you'll notice if you have spicy foods, for example, what that does to your voice. Of course, sleep, be really aware of your sleeping patterns. Um, you know, if you're not getting much sleep, it stands to reason that your voice is going to sound a bit tired or feel a bit tired and that's okay but just have that awareness of it and if you're noticing that your voice is very tired just taking that step back to say what what do I really need for my voice right now and um, how can I support my voice in the best possible way so last but not least tip number 10 celebrate your voice's many different tones and colors so your voice is just about one of the most expressive parts of you and it tells others so much and of course yourself when you listen. Um, it says so much about how you're feeling, so much about what's going on with you. Um, and you know, think about how even on the phone in a phone conversation, you can't when you can't see another person's facial expressions, you can still get a sense of how they're feeling if they're happy, sad, angry, energized, excited, or you know, you, you can really hear within their voice, uh, you get a, a good sense of what's going on with them. Remember that your voice is designed to be a tool of expression, so really try to, to have awareness to release any judgment that you have on your voice and to treat your voice with heaps of compassion when, when your voice isn't working as you want it to or that you think it should do. You know, um, as I said before, you know, your, your voice is very, very sensitive to, to a whole host of factors like the sleep, how much sleep you've had, the humidity, the temperature, other environmental fluctuations, foods and drinks that you eat um, and of course all of the different emotions that we go through over the course of a single day. Um, you know when when I started doing my podcast um, I thought oh I want to have this really relaxed voice that I always use when I'm when I'm working when I'm working with my clients it's this kind of meditative voice but I realised as I went on that actually, no, it's okay to have all of these beautiful different tone qualities and colours and because it tells so much. It tells about when I feel excited or when I feel passionate about something. Or, it, you know, there's, there's so much information, like I say, in the way that we speak. And it is such a gift when we can fully, fully embrace all of those parts of our voice and just you know, love them as part of our full human experience. So really 
have have this awareness you know instead of getting frustrated if your voice is not performing in the way that you want your voice to just really cut your voice some slack and really honor and celebrate your voice for the magnificent expression of your full humanness and the inner being that that your voice is is sharing with the world because she really is a gift your voice so I hope you found these tips helpful. And of course, if you would like to talk any further about the voice, please do come and find me. You can find me on social media. Um, you can book a free soul voice discovery call with me. Um, and let's connect. Let's talk more about the voice. Thank you for listening to the Reconnected Voice Journey podcast with me, your host, Francesca J. Littman. If you'd like to learn more about my work and how I can support you in building a more loving and empowered relationship with your voice, check out my personalised one-to-one reconnected voice journey programme options on my website, www.francescajlittman.com. You can also connect with me on social media. On Facebook, you'll find me as Francesca J. Littman, and you can also join my private reconnected voice journey group. And on Instagram, you'll find me as Reconnected Woman. Tune in next time for more Reconnected Voice inspiration. Reconnected Voice Journey Podcast.